Okay, in this video we're going to talk about second order linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients and specifically solving initial value problems that involve those. So let's see what we mean by initial value problems. So there's two types of things you'll tend to deal with with these. There's initial value problems and there's boundary value problems. Um, an initial value problem uh, you can tell is an initial value problem because you're told uh, multiple things at the same input value, so at the same x value. So we know, for example, maybe y of x0 and y prime of x0. Uh, you will definitely be able to solve that. A boundary value problem is really similar, except you're told information about two different x values. So for example, um, you might get y of x0 and y of x1, or maybe y of x0 and y prime of x1, or maybe two different values of the derivative, or values of the derivative of two different x values. So that's the difference between initial value problems and boundary value problems. You probably did a lot of initial value problems in like calculus one, calculus two. Um, boundary value problems, probably not so much. Uh, so what we wanna do, so it's also possible, I should say, with boundary value problems, uh, since you're just given information about two different x values, you might not actually have enough information to solve for the unknown constants. Um, so that's something to look out for. But initial value problem, you'll definitely be able to do it. So let's take a look. So we want to solve 4y double prime minus 20y prime plus 25y is equal to 0, where we also know that y of 0 is 2 and y prime of 0 is negative 3. So this is an initial value problem because both of those pieces of information are at x equals zero. So let's see if we can do this. Um, it's second order, constant coefficients. We're gonna get the characteristic equation. So characteristic equation is a quadratic. And in this case, it's gonna be four r squared minus 20 r plus 25. We need to solve this, see what the roots look like so that we know what the general solution looks like. So this is actually a perfect square trinomial. So it's just two minus r, uh, two r minus five quantity squared. So that means that r equals five halves is the only real zero of this thing. Okay, so we have a repeated root. And that means our solution is going to look like um, y equals c1 e to the rx plus c2 x e to the rx. And that's our solution. So that's the general form of the solution. So where we wanna go from here is we wanna to try to figure out what C1 and C2 are. So we know that Y of zero is two, and we can actually use the equation we just got to figure out um, something there. So we're gonna plug in zero for X, we're gonna plug in two for Y. That's gonna give us one equation that has C1 and C2 as its variables, potentially. Um, and then we also know that Y prime of zero is negative three. So to use that piece of information, we're gonna find y prime based on our general solution. So let's go ahead and do that. So y prime is gonna be, um, I need the derivative of c1 e to the five halves x. So that's just a chain rule problem. So five halves c1 e to the five halves x plus, um, now this is actually a product, right? It's c2 x, I'm gonna call that the first times e to the five halves x. So it's going to be first times the root of the second, the root of the second is five halves e to the five halves x. Actually, maybe could have made this simpler by factoring um, my general solution, but I didn't do that, so we're kind of stuck. So it's first root of the second plus the second times the root of the first, so we get this. Everything has an e to the five halves x, um, but I didn't bother factoring that out here because we're going to plug in zero, and that makes things a lot simpler. So what we'll do is, We'll take this version of y, we know that y of zero is two, and we're gonna create a system of equations. So using what we know about y, we get two is equal to c1 e to the zero, e to the zero is one, um, and then it's actually just plus zero because of that x right there. When we plug in zero for x, that term is gone. So we actually have this. And now we wanna do the same thing for y prime, so we take a look at it, and we're gonna plug in, so we're looking at this, we're gonna plug in zero for x and negative three for y prime, so negative three is equal to five halves c1 plus zero, because there's an x in that middle term there, 
um, and then plus just c2. So all the e to the five halves x's become e to the zeros, and e to the zero is one. So we end up with this. Uh, this we can look at, so we already know c1 is two. If you plug in two for c1 in the second equation, we get negative three equals five plus c2. So that means that c2 is negative eight. So now we know what c1 is, we know what c2 is, we found our particular solution. So uh, we'll go back to what we said y was equal to up there and just substitute. So the solution looks like y equals two e to the five halves x minus eight x e to the five halves x. And there you go. Let's take a look at another one. So I don't know what the hardest part of this is. Uh, first, you have to solve the differential equation, which maybe you find challenging, maybe not. Um, after that, you could get a very challenging system of equations that you need to solve, uh, but you know you're gonna be able to because it's a system of equations that'll have two unknowns and two equations. So let's see if we can do this. So I need to solve this. So get the characteristic equation r squared minus 8r plus 20 equals zero. This, um, I'm gonna calculate the discriminant in my head kind of. So it's b squared minus 4ac. So that's 64 minus 40. Uh, nope, 64 minus 80 is um, negative, right? It's negative 16, which means this is gonna have complex zero. So I'm just gonna use a quadratic formula right away. So r is equal to eight plus or minus um, 60, radical 64 minus 80 all over two. So that's gonna simplify down to uh, eight over two is four. And then uh, radical negative 16 is uh, four i, but then divide by two. So you get plus two i minus two i. All right, complex solutions. So we wanna write our general solution uh, with that in mind. So our general solution is gonna look like e to the 4x and then the quantity c1 cosine of 2x plus c2 sine of 2x. So you might already be thinking this is going to be more work and that's definitely true. So let's see. I need to find y prime because I know information about um, y at pi over 2 and y prime at pi over 2. So that's what makes this an initial value problem instead of a boundary value problem. A boundary value problem, I'd know like y of pi over two and maybe y of pi over four or something like that. Um, but both of these are at pi over two. So let's see, it's gonna be first, the derivative of the second. So I got some chain rule here and also some chain rule here. So remembering uh, how to work with quadratics and then come some of the simple things like derivative of cosine is negative sine, derivative of sine is cosine. Um, those are going to be really useful to you as you solve these problems. So we've got first derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. Derivative of the first is 4e to the 4x, so I'm going to write that. And then just repeat this, right? So that's second derivative of the first. And then this looks like a mess, so I'm going to factor this a bunch just to clean it up. So e to the 4x comes out of both... Um, Kind of expressions, both terms that we have here, and then uh, I'm gonna re I'm gonna take everything that has a cosine of two x. So cosine of two x has a um, two c two in front of it and a plus four c one, and then that'll be cosine of two x. Plus everything with sine of two x is negative two c one plus four c two, and then that's times sine of x. Okay, so that's as simple as we're gonna make that. Let's do the thing where we make a system of equations. So to get the system, we look at um, y, right? So we're gonna start with y because we know something about y. So we know that y of pi over two is two, and we also know that y is this thing. So let's plug in. So two is equal to, um, plug in pi over two, you get e to the two, at, two pi rather, e to the two pi. And then the quantity c1 cosine of pi is negative one plus c2 sine of pi is zero. And that's pretty useful because that tells me right away that c1 is gonna be two over negative e to the two pi, which you can rewrite as negative two e to the negative two pi. So that's c1. Um, now we gotta find uh, c2 somehow. So we'll use the other information. So we know stuff about y prime. 
So we know that y prime of pi over two is zero. And then we rewrote y prime in this kind of sort of nicely factored form. So let's substitute. So zero is e to the two pi. So that's kind of really similar. And then it's gonna be, um, so two C two plus four C one, and then cosine of pi is negative one. And then it's really nice when you have sine or cosine and you have to plug in something that makes one of them zero. It just makes everything nicer. Um, the sine of pi is zero. So right there, that's how it's nice. Um, okay, so that term's just gone. Then since this whole thing is equal to zero, the um, multiple, like we're multiplying by negative one and we're multiplying by e to the two pi, but we can just divide those out, so those are gone. So really, we have two c two plus four c one is equal to zero. But we figured out what c one is. C one is negative two e to the negative two pi. So we can rewrite this as this. All right, so we have this. I'm aware I talk kind of fast. You might need to slow down the video sometimes to follow along or maybe pause. Uh, nothing wrong with that. You should definitely do that if you need to. Um, okay, so we can solve this for C2. So C2 is going to be, uh, I'm gonna, so you have on the left hand side, currently you have 2C2 minus 8e to the negative 2 pi. I'm going to move that over so I get plus 8e to the negative 2 pi. Divide by 2 gives me just 4e to the negative 2 pi. All right, I know everything I need to know. I just need to write my answer. So I need this, this, and this. So I'm gonna take this over to just kind of a new page here. So we have these things, let's fill in what we know. So we're just filling it in, and then we're gonna look at it and see is there anything we can do. There's definitely something we can do. So we have this, and then there's an e to the negative two pi in everything, and also the order in which it's written is kind of weird. Um, so I'm gonna take out the e to the negative two pi and then I'm also gonna rearrange it so it just goes the positive term and then the negative term. I always prefer that. We have this, and then uh, e to the four x times e to the negative two pi just kind of looks weird. We should use properties of exponents on that. And we get this. And it's kind of a lot of work, but uh, that's the solution. We solve for a particular solution. It goes through exactly the values it needs to. Um, and there you go, all right. So that's what an initial value problem is, and that's two examples of how we can solve them. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.